Okay, this video is going to demonstrate uh, the use of the NVIDIA Digits deep learning uh, tools. I have used it to train on various sets of data and the data sets that I have are of, uh, of cars and uh, I'm going to show you the data sets. I have uh, the side of a car that has the uh, the, su the side with no window, I have the bottom of the window, I have the center window and top window, and I'll show you what those look like. So, the bottom window looks like this. I have a bunch of images, a whole series of images of the bottom of the window. And this is, uh, I'm training using this data so that I can hopefully in the future control a motor through the GPIO for bank ATMs so that when you pull up to a bank ATM, the ATM will actually move up and not, so you won't have to stick your arm out the window in awkward positions. And uh, so I'll just give you an example of what the center window is. Here's running I of GIMP on my Fedora laptop and I've captured a bunch of images for center and I've done the same thing for I've done the same thing for top window and you'll see I got the top window and I've gotten a bunch of images caught on my cell phone camera that I use so so basically I, I've captured a bunch of images and the number of images that I've captured are I have 1198 in the bottom window I have 877 in the center window I have 908 in the no window and 1005 in the top window so I'm going to train on that data and then I'm going to test using uh, that data to see if it calculated the right calculates the right answer. So I'm going to start up the digits server. I downloaded and installed the latest digits 5.1 and that's a server that's a non GUI application. Now I'm going to get into Firefox and when you get into Firefox you have to go to the IP is a funny IP, 0.0.0.0, port 5000. And when you do that, you get to the Digits home page. And I have some test data sets there already, but I'm going to show you how to create a data set. So you get to the data set tab, and then you click on images, classification, and it may ask you for a, a username. Now Digits uses 256 by 256 images, so even if your images are bigger than that, it's going to squash them down to 256 by 256. And in this widget here, you put the directory of your images. Now, in the Window Images folder, your categories have to be subdirectories under this. So uh, I have bottom window, center window, no window, and top window. So that will be the classification categories that CAFE will use in the end when I give it an image. It will give me a percentage of, of uh, validation for one of those four categories. All four of those categories, but the one that's the correct one should be the highest. So my directory of images are subdirectories of window images, like I showed before, the bottom window, center window, top window, and no window. So I'm going to enter that top directory as the training images. And there's a lot of uh, options to this program that I don't completely understand entirely, but then again, you don't really have to know how to use it, all the, uh, the options in order to run it. So I'm using JPEG files. So I selected JPEG, and I'm going to give it a test data set. I'll give it just a test data set 2, and then I'm going to hit Create, and it's going to go ahead, and it's going to start to run and it's going to create your data set for, uh, for the next phase for your training. So the first step is to create a data set. 
the next step is to actually train. Now I'm only using a very very small subset of windows and in reality you're supposed to use thousands and thousands of images which is why they make those high performance NVIDIA DGX1 and DGX2 systems. I'm running on a, uh, a Fedora laptop with a Quadro 1000M 2 gigabyte GPU so I don't have a lot of the resources but it'll still run so as we're watching this this will eventually get to a hundred percent and uh, when it does it'll have created the data set now there's it'll give you a lot of statistics about the data set and you can explore the data set and it'll give you all the images it'll shows here the classifications of the that I have I have four classifications and the number of images in each one and but the real goal of this is to generate the data set that's going to be gone into the next phase and on this system here it takes uh, it takes about four minutes to run you can see that it's up to almost 60 percent complete and if you go to the window that you actually spawn digits on it'll give you some statistics as it's running it's creating a database I generally look at that only if there's an error um, so what I'm going to do is let this run for just a little bit it's up to 74 percent we can let this run and then we will move on to the next phase 80 percent 84 percent it's going to be done in about 20 four seconds now it's down to 20 seconds so like I said the goal of this is to generate a data set for the second phase which is the real training phase so again get your images classify them by the categories and put them in each individual subdirectories under a main directory alright so that finished so you'll see here that the job is complete it wrote 2988 images to a database and so if you scroll down here it basically gives you some things you can look at it gives you an image mean and things like that so now we're gonna move on to the actual second phase so you go to models and then go to image classification so if we go back there's a there's a data sets tab there's a models tab so you click models and then say images classification there's the data set we created so we select that and you'll see that there's several options that has these things called epics epics is the is uh or all the images you have in your training set so it runs it 30 times okay and one of the important things you want to do if you're going to run cafe on t the jetson tx1 is you want to change this from image mean to pixel mean because the default applications that come with the Jetson TX1, the classification C++ class, or even the Python, uses pixel mean. So you want to you want to switch to pixel mean rather than image mean. Now, since I have a very small GPU on this thing, there's this thing called batch size, which means the number of images run all at once. Increase that to to at least 10 or more, depending on how much memory you have on your GPU. Because if you don't, you'll get an error message saying that you're out of memory. So that's important. There's a lot of options here that I don't really quite understand, but the other, but I know that this one here, the base learning rate, you need to drop that down to a very small number if you have a very uh, low number of images like I have, or else the classification training will not work. Now you have the option of using three uh, predefined uh, networks, LENet, AlexNet, and GoogleNet. And I don't really know all the differences between them, but I use AlexNet. And then I select AlexNet, and then I say test model, or give it a name for your, whatever you want to give it, and then hit create. And then that'll start the base training. Now, the training window shows you the GPU I have it shows the the amount of memory that's going to be taken up and if you do exceed the memory it'll give you an error and then then you have to basically increase your batch size but I know from running this model before that I will not blow 
the memory and it'll run. Now this takes quite a long time for this data to run. It takes about a day and a half or maybe not that long but maybe at least a day to run. So that's why you need these high performance systems because you don't want to wait that long. But since I don't really have a need to get the answers right away I can submit it and then come back in a day. But this is running. This is generating your data set. Okay. Now I'm while this is running, I can go back to a, a model that I did run already. Okay. This is one here. And what you'll see is when it's finished, you'll get a graph like this where the accuracy goes up to 100% and then levels off. And then the loss goes down to zero. So when you get a chart that looks similar to this, that means it trained well. If it doesn't look like this and it doesn't uh, rise as asymptotically up to 100% uh, for the accuracy, then you have to look at why that didn't work. So, and there's various data products that come out of this. And you can look at an output log. There's the CAFE output log. It tells you uh, a lot of statistics. It uses this JavaScript object notation for a lot of these uh, outputs. I don't, like I said, I don't really understand it completely, but uh, it's there. But one thing you can do is after you've trained it, like this was finished, you can test it. Okay, so if I want to test this, I can go and upload an image. Okay, so right now it takes me to the uh, directory that I used before for a center window. So the center window is obviously right here. It's a, it's, it's a window that's in the center. So I will select that and I will say classify one. And I will see that in a second that it comes up and says the center window is 99.98%. So that's pretty, pretty darn good. Um, so what I would probably want to do is take, uh, the next step is to take images that are not based on the data that I trained with and see how it did. Now I have some uh, data of um, some other images. For example, this is uh, the data I trained with was on my uh, Toyota RAV4. So if I pass it a center window of a Honda Accord, which is uh, right here, and I pass that in, you'll see I believe that it also comes back almost 100%. And in fact, it is 100%. So that's good because I want to be able to train it on a limited data set but have it work for all cars. I'm going to have to get data from uh, a lot of cars to make this really work. Um, but I was impressed to see that at least it worked for the Honda. And the window design of the Honda and the Toyota look very close. So I'm not at all surprised. So that is showing you uh, how to run digits to train and then uh, once you've trained it well one thing I want to show you is once it's trained is to you can download the data products and the downloaded data products is a tar GC file once this comes back it's running a little slow. Come on. It's probably because I'm running the... Uh, okay, there it is. Once it's done training, you click this download model button. And the download model button will download... It'll says, do you want to save the file? So it gives you this name here. It's of the last epic. Now you can you can save any epic you want, but I saved the last one, but you can save, I believe, uh, if you select this up here, another epic, you could download that model. So I'm going to save it, and then in that file, if you unzip it, those are the data products you're going to want to transfer over to your TX1 and run CAFE on it. So that's your trained data set. And um, what I've showed in another video that I believe that you're going to see is a, a case where I was training it on me sitting in front of the, uh, the computer and then me not sitting in front 
and lighting up the red LED and that is based on data that I trained on and I was running the Jetson TX1 classification based on that trained data. So that is essentially uh, a quick tutorial on how to run digits, how to use your images, again separate the images into separate folders, each folder with a name for the classification that you want to use. So if you're going to use uh, you can classify it on cats and you want to use it on uh, different colored cats. You could separate it into brown cats, white cats, you know, calico cats, and they have each folder have images of that particular type. Train it, and those are the classif classifications you're going to get. And then uh, once you've done that, you go into and create the data set, and then you train it and uh, get the data products that you can then download to the Jetson TX1 or whatever uh, you want to do. Now some of these data products are text files and some of them are binary. So you'll have to, uh, you know, take a look. And like the solver.prototext file, I believe, oh, that's not going to let me open it. So I believe that's a text file, but uh, the deploy, I believe, is a, is a binary file. But nonetheless, take those files over to the, uh, to the Jetson. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.